Welcome to episode 232 of Clarity Compressed. My name is Paul J. Daly, and today I'm going to tell you how to drive a $50,000 vehicle for just $87 a month. I know that's really clickbaity, but I, you'll see. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. You know, we, we watch so many YouTube videos in my house that everything gets really clickbaity, especially the ones with the kids. And so I couldn't help myself but give you a little bit of a clickbaity intro. But actually, it's true. I can tell you how I drove a $50,000 vehicle for about $83 a month. But I can't really tell you how to do it again. And I would never be able to do it again. So here's the quick story. I drive a 2020 Kia Telluride. I'm in it right now. This is my last day actually of driving this car. I'll tell you why. But I leased this vehicle when it was when it came out actually. I ordered it right from the factory. The Tellurides were just coming out. A uh, really desirable vehicle. And it was just under $50,000 was the purchase price of the vehicle. I leased it. And I picked it up from Buffalo, New York. Actually, it was the Eagles and the Bills were playing. So I actually drove the Buffalo to watch the Eagles game and pick up this new vehicle. So you know what happened. The pandemic hit. And when the pandemic hit, it caused pandemonium on just about everything, especially the automotive industry. And now what has happened is that there's so little supply of used vehicles on the market because manufacturers stopped making cars and supply and demand, right? Less vehicles means the prices go up. And my lease is up, and I'm about to get out of this vehicle. And here's the deal. The vehicle is actually worth like $45,000. So $48,000 was the new price. Three years later and 30,000 miles later, this vehicle is only worth $3,000 less than it was brand new. Now, granted, I keep it in really good shape. It's relatively no, low miles, 30,000 miles for a three-year-old vehicle. And so that three years of driving this Telluride only cost me three thousand dollars so i could never do that again and so i use that story to kind of actually pivot us into the real topic of today's podcast so what car are you going to get in next paul thank you i'm so glad you asked so uh here's here's what happened basically um you know i'm, I'm pretty tied in with gary vaynerchuk and the vayner media organization and i got a call from my friend james orsini coo uh former coo of vayner media now the president of the sasha group and he was like Hey, we need to get a new, Gary needs a new car. His, uh, not his, his personal vehicle, the vehicle that he's driven around in. And, um, since I'm in the auto industry, I guess I am now their car guy. So I was happy to help found a dealer who's a big fan of Gary V. We locked down, you know, it's hard to find inventory, but we found him a great vehicle that suits their needs. And, uh, he's trading in his vehicle that has a whole lot of miles on it. Cause he drives a whole lot of miles, or at least is driven a whole lot of miles. And I decided, you know what? My lease is up. I'm going to buy Gary's vehicle. So I am actually trading in the Telluride. I'm selling the Telluride back to the dealership and I will be buying Gary Vaynerchuk's vehicle that he's been in for the last three years. And there's so much social media content that was made in this vehicle. I'm going to collect all the videos, but basically just the straight entrepreneurial energy coming from this vehicle is something I'm incredibly excited about. I'm going to try to do a few special things more on that in a minute or more on that soon. Not in a minute. I got to wait till things get all handled. You know, you try not to talk about things until they're done because you know, you want to make sure they get done. The point that I want to say is this, is it a little bit of an unconventional thing to do? Yes. Entrepreneurial life and modern day business life, if you're not comfortable with unconventional things and taking little risks and putting the pieces together in your head to say, I think this will happen, um, let me try. Unless you're willing to do that, guess what? You're toast. We talk about this all the time. You don't have to be like starting your own business or running your own business to embrace this mentality of let me be willing to try something that hasn't been tried or do something that people might look at you and say, really, you're going to go through all that effort to do that? Yes, I am. And whether you are a middle manager, whether you are managing the fry station at your local Chick-fil-A, guess what? You can embrace the same attitude of wanting to make something better and being willing to do something differently in order to grasp an opportunity. So I told all those stories because I want to encourage you today, whether again, whether you're in leadership, 
whether you're a middle management, whether you're the fry guy, whether you're just walking your dog, whether you're trying to manage your family well, uh, be a good parent, whether you're in school right now and you're trying to figure out what your next steps are in your education, whether you're just like, maybe you're just a kid and you're like kind of living at home and you're going to high school or you're doing your summer break thing. What doesn't change is that you have a lot of agency, which is control, which is decision-making power over your day-to-day -day life in which you can think of new ways to do things. You can examine the things that you're doing, look at the situation you're in, and choose and decide to try to improve that. And yes, does it mean sometimes it's not going to work out? Actually, from my experience, it means sometimes most of the time it's not going to work out the way you thought. It might not even work out positively. But the point is, every time you try, every time you do something new, every time you take that risk, you learn something. And funny enough, it kind of leads you to the next best opportunity. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Everything good that is in your life right now has come as a result of something changing. And so instigating change in your life is a good thing, as long as it's a healthy way. Don't instigate change in your life because you can't put your life together, right? And you just need to change to distract yourself. That's not what I'm talking about. So I hope that this, uh, it's actually Sunday afternoon right now when I'm recording this. I hope this Sunday afternoon conversation around my very clickbaity topic is something that uh, maybe encourages you to think of things a little different or maybe to take that risk that you were considering taking because because you can i want to pull the car over so i can look in the camera because you can and because it's worth it and because the more things you try the more likely you are to grow i hope you have a great week i hope to see you next time maybe from a new car maybe gary vaynerchuk's car we'll see i'll talk to you next time we came to fight.